All right, welcome. So I'm Brian. I'm the maintainer for the ID editor. This is the default editor that you can use on OpenStreetMap that lets you edit the map right from your browser. So we've got a lot to go through today. I'm going to go like super fast to get it all in five minutes. Um, every good talk needs like an ask, so I'm just going to like lead right off with it. We are an open source project on GitHub, so please check us out. There's lots of opportunities for new contributors to jump in and help out with stuff. You can add presets, fix bugs that don't require too much knowledge of the code. So uh, this is my cry for help right here, please. Um, we even tag some issues like good first issue, which is great for new contributors. So where are we today with ID? ID is currently at version 2.10. Uh, we just released a new version last Thursday. And I try to release a new minor version like maybe once a month or so. So sometimes we'll go a few months without um, a release, but that just means we're working on something bigger. In this talk, I'm going to highlight some of the accomplishments that we've made over the past year. So we're going to go all the way back to July 7th last year. We were at version 2.3. ID has always been designed primarily for beginners who've never mapped before. So um, we've added this new user interface pattern. Across the bottom, you'll see these advanced features that were previously considered out of scope for ID because we didn't want to scare off the new users. These are info panels that kind of stack up along the bottom of the screen. You can show or hide them with a keyboard shortcut. So we've got like background, shows you information about the current imagery, like the data it was captured. History will show you who last edited the selected feature. Location will show you the coordinates of the mouse, like the latitude, longitude. Um, does a nominatum lookup also, just so you can see like where you're editing. And measurement lets you measure length and area and distance and things like that. Um, and by the way, you can discover these commands on our new keyboard shortcut screen. So shout out to Kushan, actually, who was, um, he helped work on this feature. You can bring it up just by pressing question mark any time while you're editing. So it's pretty useful. Then later in July, with version 2.3.2, we added some mapillary improvements. And Kushan worked on this feature, too. Now we fetch the street sign detections from their mapillary API and highlight them down in the, in the viewer. Moving on to version 2.4, released in August, we added some things to the save screen. So we extract hashtags from the comment and put them in their own change set tag. This could eventually let people perform better analysis of change sets and maybe even lead to less noisy comments. Um, some people really don't like to see all those hashtags in the comments, so now there's a place for them. Um, also new on this screen, the review request checkbox for users who are maybe a little unsure of their work and want some feedback about what they did. These get highlighted in tools like OSMCHA and Pascal Nisa's tools, so we'd love to see some more experienced users step in to review the new user's work and give them some feedback. Then um, in version 2.4, we also landed Esri world imagery background layers, so big thanks to Sam Libby and John Gravoy and the rest of the team at Esri, so thank you to them for that. Um, version 2.5 in November, we added support for OpenStreetCam, so thank you to Martin and the team from Telenav for helping land this. Moving on to January of this year, version 2.6, this release included some new tricks to let mappers enhance the background imagery. So you can like crank up the brightness or contrast or adjust the saturation and even sharpen the imagery a little bit. This one is like kind of fun to play with and turns out to be really useful. Then version 2.6, we also upgraded a bunch of the presets to support public transport v2. Like, yeah, I know v3 is in the pipeline, but you can check out the cool icons on the sides. We do our best to let mappers map all those like stop locations and platforms and stuff like that. Then in March, version 2.7, we released a big update to the turn restrictions editor. So now it supports adding viaway restrictions and only restrictions. It also highlights the paths that you take through the intersections so that you can really understand the effect of what you're doing. Viaways are important for mapping things like no U-turn across a dual carriageway. And this example shows me adding some only straight on restrictions to simplify this channelized intersection. Like you can only go certain ways through it. In April in version 2.8, we changed the screen that we show to the users after they save their edits. So we have a new community index project. We use this to display local OSM meetups, user groups, and events like State of the Map US. Sign up. We deliberately use language on this screen targeted to newer mappers to let them know that there are people who care about the map that they are editing. Then last month, we added support for Bing Street Side. So this brings in 360 degree panoramic imagery across large portions of the US, UK, France, and Spain. Thank you to Jubal Harpster and the team at Microsoft for making this possible. Finally, um, well, almost finally, then last Thursday with version 2.10, we released support for the OSM notes. This is work done by our Google Summer of Code student, Thomas Hervey, and mentor Mark Farah at Development Seed. Here we're looking at all the notes around New York City. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of work to do to close these, but mappers can comment on, close, reopen, and even add new notes right from within ID. We also snuck in a few other cool features to version 2.10. One of our contributors, Psigio, I don't know who that is, but he added a command to let you detach a node from away and move it someplace else. It really feels like magic when you just like pick a node like this bollard and hit the E key and just like 
pulls right to your cursor. It's pretty cool. Finally, shout out to Mateus from Mapillary who made it possible to resize the viewer window. So this works for all the photo layers, Mapillary, OpenStreetCam, and StreetSide. That is all the time I have. Thank you. Again, check us out. Follow us to start the ID project on GitHub. <laughs>